Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Sun decided to come out today and I had a few things I really wanted to get done and try out so I figured I'd bring you guys along for the walk. There's been a lot of um, things on YouTube about these ultra capacitors and using them to create a jump starter and all that other kind of stuff. You guys are familiar with your typical jump pack. You buy these things, Harbor Freight. They're somewhere around 50 bucks, give or take a foot and a half. $49.95 um, or $39.95, depending on if you get them on sale. So, if you buy one of these ultra capacitors, right, 89 bucks. By the time you get it shipped, you got 100 bucks. So you have two to three x the amount of money tied up and I have two versions here I got this little guy the little guy is about 16 and two-thirds farads this bigger guy is about 56 farads right and I've tried this little one on um, you know 110 cc motors and I don't have the biggest wires going through it Actually, the wires are kind of small, and quite honestly, it didn't have enough chutzpah to turn over one of these little motors. Um, this one in particular was pretty cheap. I don't know. It was like 20 bucks. Um, I ordered it, and the guy said it would take like 30 days to show up. So I waited 45 days and pinged them. And he said, give it another few days, and I gave it another few days, and it still didn't show up, so I opened up a, uh, a thing on eBay. Not that I wanted to cause him any trouble. This was coming from uh, Taiwan, I think. Not that I wanted to cause him trouble, but you only have so much time with eBay for things not showing up before, um... You, you know, you can't complain anymore. They're like, you, you know, you should have called us before two months went by. So, um, anyway, I opened up a thing with eBay. It took about a week, and my PayPal got a refund. And I'm like, okay. Then it took like another two weeks, and the little guy showed up. And I tried to get in touch with this guy, but this guy has like disappeared. So, I'm not sure if he was having postage problems or what his issue was. So this was more or less a freebie, and I guess it's a good thing that it's more or less a freebie. Because I thought it would be able to jumpstart these things, but it's not strong enough to jumpstart 110 cc's. Um, this one is four times the size, but I'm going to go right to a um, V6 and try to start the... Um, the caravan or Dodge Voyager or whatever that piece of junk is out back. It's got the 3.3 liter V6 in it. Um, just quickly before we get too far from a safety point of view, obviously you don't want to be smashing these wires together. You really don't want to um, put that up against anything metal. I mean, worse you know, a minor problem is you might just blow up a capacitor. A major problem, one of those capacitors might just decide to let go. And God knows what trouble that could cause. Anything from, you know, a viral YouTube video to a, um, an injury or perhaps worse than an injury, eh? I, I don't know, and I'm not going to start shorting these leads together to f figure it out. I have it like that, which is not the greatest way of handling things, but we're going for it. Yeah, so my thoughts are i got plenty of these boxes floating around where the gel cells went dead, and if I can smash one of these capacitor packs in there, if it really does a good job starting these vehicles, I'm going to be like, boy, this is nice. Supposedly, these capacitor packs are supposed to last, last more or less indefinitely, Depending on how you treat your gel cell, your lead acid gel cell pack, they I've had them last anywhere between less than a year, and by that I mean like a lot less than a year, and indefinitely. 
I have one that's that's currently a um, a couple of years old, and it seems to be doing just fine. I'm going to try to do this in such a way that I don't light anything important up, and we'll see if we can't manage that. Now, I feel it's already by the made like a little crispy sound, so I think it's already drawing some power. And you guys could see the dome lights on. So now let's see if the rattle start. So the answer is no, it will not start. It makes the starter click, but it will not turn it over. Um, I charged this through a light bulb, and the current went way down. Well, actually, I charged this up against another battery. I clipped it to another battery, and I did that for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason why I did it is um, you're not supposed to take these over like 13 and a half volts. That's not a good thing to do. You can um, you can blow them up if you do that. So that was that was the first reason why I did it that way. The second reason why I did it um, that way is the battery had quite a bit of charge in it. And I figured that would give me a nice big source of electrons to fill this thing up with. And um, then I had the battery charger on it, charging the battery. So basically this thing was limited to like 13.4 volts with a huge, huge source of electrons backed up by a battery charger. And... Um, you know, I left it there quite a while, basically till the current draw went to more or less zero. And uh, so I, I think this thing has a pretty fair charge on it. What I'm doing is I'm walking over and I'm going to just pop it on the pit bike here for a second to see if it's got enough oomph, chutzpah whatever to turn this thing over so that's what I'm up to now um, I'm going to put this right on the bronze plug I'm just using this clip as a convenient way of being able to get to the starter here I don't have a carburetor on this thing so it can turn over as much as it wants So I guess what I'm showing you is that 56 farads when it comes to one of these things seems to be enough to turn over one of these bikes. Um, and it's nice for such a purpose because this is nice and light. But quite honestly, for $100, you can buy two jump packs. I guess my jump pack is hiding over here currently where I used it last. And, um, or God knows where my jump pack is hiding. Anyway, um, so I, I'm not, I'm not thinking it's really, really worthwhile. There's a kind of a big fad on YouTube about putting these capacitor jump packs everywhere. And I'm, I'm quite honestly, I'm not seeing it. I, I don't know why one would do that. Um, from a financial point of view, it's not really worthwhile. Once again, they cost twice as much. And from a um, you have to be careful with them point of view. And quite honestly, they don't, they don't seem to have the amps. 
that you're really going to need to start something like a car up. In my opinion, the um, I showed you guys the lithium ion one. I like that better for the money, right? Um, they they're getting reasonable too. They're beginning to slip under under thirty bucks. I used one to start the V6. I used. I've also tried them on the um, these bikes, and they seem to do okay. So I I personally would go with the um, with the lithium ion jump jump pack. Um, perhaps smash a lithium ion battery into your uh, into your dead case. Um, with the lithium ion battery, though, you do have to be a little careful. Um, with your your charge voltage you don't want your charge voltage to go up too high um, I think I think on those they want you to really keep them down below um, for long life they really want to stay below 13 volts so you're gonna have to pay a little bit more attention to charging them and all um, you know but they they really they really don't want you to keep a full charge voltage of um, of uh, 13 and a half volts on them. They don't. It's not 13 and a half is going to blow them up. It probably takes 13.75 or 14 volts to blow them up. But um, for long life, as you get over 13 volts, you show the life curve starts coming way down until you, you hit a catastrophic. And I'm not quite sure where that crossover for catastrophic is, if it's 14 volts or, you know, 13.75 or 14 and a quarter. But um, I know for long life, they say that you should really keep them somewhere around 12 and a half volts. So I guess um, the overall conclusion really is if you're buying these things for around 30 bucks, your 12 volt jump pack with your 12 amp hour gel cell um, you can really mistreat them fairly well or fairly you could treat them fairly poorly and uh, they'll, they'll take the abuse as you move um, to the capacitor ones I'm quite honestly I'm disappointed that uh, that hundred dollar investment for the 56 farad one was just was not it, it, it was not a good investment um, I really wanted to hear that v6 rotor life but it, it just did not so I guess such is life um, probably if I smashed two of them together and went from 56 and doubled that to maybe you know what is that 112 or perhaps three of them but once again, you're looking at each 56 is costing you a tad over a hundred bucks. So, uh, what's a car battery cost? Um, if you can spend a hundred bucks on a car battery, a hundred bucks on a capacitor, and their equivalent, you go with the lighter weight and so forth, the longer life of the capacitor. But um, quite honestly, 56 ain't going to cut it, which means you got to start working your way toward, you know. Two and a quarter, three fifty. Yeah, you're buying a lot of lead acid batteries for that kind of money. All right, folks. I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and please get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.